cassoulet is a classic French dish that's so delicious and comforting. But what really makes it special is the flageolet beans. The little pale green beans have got such a unique flavor and they are so tender and creamy. They really are the heart of this dish. Soak the flageolet beans for at least 12 hours and then strain them. Place the beans in a large pot and add fresh spring water to cover the beans by about two inches and now bring to a boil over medium-high heat. As you see, the beans have created quite a bit of foam here, so make sure you skim it. Now add the oil, the garlic, and the bouquet garni, and stir that well. That big, beautiful bouquet garni is gonna give us an amazingly rich and fragrant stock. Now reduce the heat between medium and medium-low, Use a spoon to partially cover the pot. Now simmer the beans until tender. This will take about 20 to 40 minutes depending on the freshness of your beans. It's been about 25 minutes and the beans are done. So turn off the heat and remove the bouquet garni. And also remove the garlic cloves. Now strain the beans. You should have 8 cups of cooked beans and make sure to reserve the cooking liquid from the beans because it's going to add a marvelous flavor to our cassoulet. The base for this beautiful vegetable cassoulet is a mirepoix, which is a classic combination of onion, carrots and celery cut in small pieces and then sautéed. But to bring even more flavor to the cassoulet, we're going to add leeks and parsnips to the mirepoix. To cut the onion in quarter inch pieces, first trim off the stem end. Then with a paring knife, make a small slit all the way along the onion here, all the way to the root end. And then peel the first layer. Now make sure to keep the root end intact because this is going to help the onion stay together. Now cut the onion in half through the root end. Now cut the onion lengthwise in about a quarter inch strips, making sure not to go all the way to the end so that the layers stay attached together. And now with a knife parallel to the board, make a couple of incisions. Again, not going all the way to the end. And now cut the onion crosswise in quarter inch pieces. Now for the celery, cut both ends and then cut it in about three sections. Now cut each section in quarter inch slices lengthwise and then crosswise in quarter inch cubes. Now peel the carrots, trim both ends and now cut the carrots in about three to four inch sections to make it a little bit easier to handle. Cut each section in half lengthwise and then cut again in quarter inch slices. Now cut each slice lengthwise in quarter inch strips. And then cut the strips crosswise in quarter inch cubes. For the parsnip, I recommend using roots that are smaller in size because they'll have less fiber in the core. So now peel the parsnips. Now trim both ends. And here again, we'll cut the parsnip in sections so it's easier to handle. Now for the thin part, just cut it in half. And then cut it crosswise in quarter inch pieces. For the larger section, we'll do exactly what we did for the carrots. So cut it in half lengthwise and then cut it again in quarter inch slices. Now cut each slice in quarter inch strips and then crosswise in quarter inch pieces. Here's our mirepoix and as you see the ingredients are cut more or less in quarter inch pieces. This will ensure that they cook evenly. Heat a large pot of a medium high heat. I actually recommend the pot to be wide as well. This will give you more room to cook the vegetables. 
when the pot is hot add the olive oil, the onions and the leeks. Stir well until the ingredients are well coated with the oil and saute for about 4 minutes until the onions are translucent. And just stir from time to time. Now add the celery, the carrots and the parsnips. Now stir well again until everything is well coated with the oil. And we're going to continue sautéing until the ingredients are golden. This will take about 6 to 7 minutes. As you see, the vegetables are starting to turn golden, so we are almost done. It's important not to brown the vegetables for the dish. We want a more delicate flavor for the cassoulet. So now add the garlic. Stir well again. And so it for about a minute. We definitely don't want to brown the garlic. We just want it to release its flavor. Mm, it's starting to smell so amazing. All these delicious vegetables are so fragrant. Now add the pureed tomatoes, the cooked beans, the reserved cooking liquid from the beans, the salt and ground pepper and, and you're going to want to put lots of pepper because the beans definitely need it. Now stir that well. By the way the tomatoes are going to bring a wonderful acidity and depth to the cassoulet. It's a wonderful contrast to the rest of the ingredients. And now bring to a boil. Now that the beans are boiling, reduce the heat between medium and medium low. Place a wood spoon to partially cover the pot and simmer for 35 to 40 minutes until the juices have thickened. And don't forget to stir the beans now and then, especially towards the end of the cooking. This way they won't stick to the bottom of the pot. Let's have a peek. Our beans are done. Do you see how thick the juices are? Now make sure to taste the cassoulet before you serve it because beans tend to absorb so much of the flavors. This is a wonderful dish to serve at the table family style but if you decide to plate it, just spoon it into bowls. Then garnish with a few crotons. Drizzle with a little bit of olive oil and sprinkle with the parsley. This cassoulet is one delicious bowl of beans. Enjoy making it and bon appétit!